Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're going to be talking about a massive storm system with a snowstorm and blizzard-like conditions, as well as a severe component with damaging winds, very large hail, and tornadoes. So if you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button and notification bell to get all my daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. Good morning, everyone. This is your Wednesday. November the 10th update and what we're looking at here is an inverted trough on the 500 millibar that is going to set the stage for some very active weather over portions of Oklahoma into North Texas later on tonight with severe weather and all three modes are on the table as this inverted trough really dives down deep and really pulls in and starts to, the winds start to veer later on this afternoon into the overnight hours tonight. So let's go over the parameters here because the Storm Prediction Center continues to increase this activity with this severe threat. Now they have a hatched risk. This is pretty rare for November standards, but yeah, that is what's on the table tonight. A hatched risk, a possibility of a greater possibility of two inch diameter hailstones that is indicative of some golf ball to tennis ball size hail. And yes, a couple supercells could produce tornadoes. So if you live anywhere in the Oklahoma City area, getting into the Dallas Fort Worth area, up to uh, Norman, Oklahoma, Norman, Oklahoma, going all the way down into Arlington, into the Fort Worth area, you're more susceptible to seeing those large supercell thunderstorms that include those large hail, that damaging wind, and that tornado threat, a little bit lesser threat as you get into uh, the Kansas City, Missouri area, going into Tulsa and the Wichita, Wichita, Kansas area, into Overland Park. But still, don't let your guard down because you still could produce an isolated tornado, some larger hail, maybe on the, on the cusp of quarter size hail in your neck of the woods. But yeah, this looks like a pretty big event tonight, setting up over Kansas, over Oklahoma, and getting into portions of North Texas. And, and then the tornado threat has also increased. They have just increased this from a 2% to a 5% coverage. So this continues to intensify with every update that's coming in. And it should start around four o'clock this, after, this afternoon into the Oklahoma area. So we'll go over all the timing and parameters, but yeah, the tornado threat looks to be a little bit higher now going into portions of uh, Norman, Oklahoma, getting into the cusp of, say, Denton and the Gainesville area. Those areas a little bit under the gun going into Oklahoma uh, for seeing those a little bit higher probability of a tornado or two. So let's take a look at the significant tornado parameters. And yes, this continues to intensify. We're starting to see some fours and fives show up on the map. Uh, right along that looks like supercell thunderstorms will initiate uh, into Oklahoma first and then kind of back build into the Dallas Worth area and set up west of the I-35 corridor. If they're able to do that, they're going to be able to hold together and stay intact as that as it erodes the cap over over the uh, the afternoon hours and going into the evening hours. But yeah, it looks like there's a small window there from about an eight o'clock to eleven o'clock time frame of seeing those greater possibility of tornado into the Denton area, into Gainesville area, going to portions of Wichita Falls, getting into, uh, say, Durant and Ada. All those areas will be under the gun to see a little bit higher chance of a tornado tonight. So let's take a look at the flash index. This is your lightning parameters as we get into that 9, 10 o'clock time frame. Uh, like I think, uh, we'll go over the uh, HRRR model here in a little bit, but yeah, by that 9, 10 o'clock time frame, man, everything should be lighting up into Oklahoma, into North Texas with that nasty severe line moving through the Metroplex with all three modes of severe weather uh, possible. So let's kind of break this down. So here's the latest update from the uh, HRRR model about five o'clock. And so about five o'clock, we should start to see initialization of large cell supercell thunderstorms starting to break out into uh, Stillwater, going into the Oklahoma City area, going into uh, parts of uh, Kansas here. And within these isolated supercells, that's where you're gonna have to be on the lookout for that isolated tornado threat. Some of that large hail and that damaging wind threat of 65 mile per hour winds or, or greater as these turn severe, and as they turn severe, they'll start to back build. So about five o'clock, 
you see these little shadows here that is indicative of a strong cap that's going to be over further south into the metroplex but as this instability is going to be able to back build and tap into that instability that's going to be able to erode the cap as we get greater into that seven eight nine o'clock time frame further south into the dallas fort worth area and that's when i think storms are going to be able to explode into portions of north texas mainly along the line of a dallas north line as that greater instability especially if you live north of the 380 corridor say around the denton area the gainesville area right around the red river going just across the border i think that's the culprit that's kind of the bullseye of where you could see some of that greater instability uh from these large cell super th supercell thunderstorms but here's the kind of the radar depiction of what it might look like about 10 o'clock tonight going right this is in the heart of say mckinney into denton and to grayson county here those areas will be under the gun to see those large cell supercell thunderstorms and this will tail off and once this moves through we've got a cold front and once the cold front moves through everything rapidly clears out behind it so it's about a four o'clock window as storms start to initiate into oklahoma and they start to back build along the the tail of the front and by you after eight o'clock getting into the midnight hour things should start winding down after midnight time frame in and around the dallas warworth metroplex and those storms will initiate and keep, keep extending uh eastward so let's take a look at there's also a um, a storm of a snowstorm component to this as well because look at the dynamic system i mean which this goes all the way down from texas all the way to canada here and a northerly component is all snow where it's able to pull in some of that colder air but this will continue in this comma q shape with these storms pushing off through louisiana into mississippi into uh, portions of uh, tennessee getting into kentucky here as well as uh, illinois and indiana and wisconsin uh these probably won't be severe but the southern component will but to the northern component it's all snow and it could be heavy snow as these isobars really start to tighten up the winds start cranking 40 50 upwards to 60 mile per hour at times and yes we could be even looking at blizzard like conditions setting up over getting into the overnight hours on thursday night into friday but some very heavy snow uh, setting up over portions of Saskatchewan, going into Mani Manitoba and up into Canada, as well as Ontario. Winnipeg could pick up, you know, a foot up to, to almost two feet of snow uh, from this system. But on the south side, we've got that severe component will just be extending. It's over the Dallas Warworth area in Oklahoma on today, but for tomorrow, it'll just rapidly shift off into the southeast. So these areas will be under the gun to seeing some of those strong to severe thunderstorms into Mississippi, going into Alabama, going into uh, Georgia here, portions of Tennessee Valley, extending into parts of uh, the, the Carolina regions. So definitely be on the lookout for those supercell thunderstorms to be over your neck of the woods and turn severe by the time we get into uh, tomorrow. But again, those storms will continue uh, pushing off. And there's that Thursday night. This is that midnight time frame. I think when you wrap around on the backside, there's going to be a small window there where we could see blizzard light conditions setting up to portions of the Dakotas, getting into Minnesota here. There's a small pocket here. Yes, all it takes is three hours at a time of 35 mile per hour winds or greater and half mile visibility or less. And I think you reach that criteria into the overnight hours. Uh, that Thursday night, Friday morning uh, time frame as this thing really rapidly deepens and draws in that colder air and changes all that to snow uh, by then. So, but here's the winds. I mean, these are going to be cranking uh, uh, gust winds of upwards to 50, upwards to 60 mile per hour at times with blowing and drifting snow. So it's going to be nasty travel in this neck of the woods by the time we get into that Thursday night, uh, Friday morning time frame. So definitely be off the road. Just stay home because it's just going to be nasty outside. And you don't want to be caught in the middle of all that as this will continue to wind down and move through as we get into uh, Friday. So as we move through that Friday time frame, uh, that the, uh, the 12th, there's that front. I mean, you can see how fast this moves. These things rapidly move across. That severe component rapidly moves through in the morning, going into the afternoon. Now, as we get 
into that Friday time frame, uh, that's when we could see some of those uh, stronger, stronger storms setting up along the I-95 corridor as we continue uh, to move across into uh, portions of a New York City. Some of that heavier rain will set up over Jersey, over Connecticut, over Massachusetts, those areas as it starts to wind down and have a little bit lesser amounts as we get into Iowa. And then some of the changeover will start taking place into Wisconsin, as well as northern portions of Illinois, say in the Chicago area, they could be starting to see some of a kind of a wet snowflakes uh, start to fly in that neck of the woods. But as we get into Saturday, we do have a developing low pressure system that's gonna be developing along the I-95 corridor. And again, there's, I mean, it's gonna be some colder air, but it's gonna be right on the cusp of some freezing conditions in these areas. So there's, we're gonna kind of see of a, a mixed bag. Most of, most of this is gonna be on the, on the rain form, but yes, where it gets cold enough and depending on time of day, some of this could change over to kind of a wet snow, you know, a 33 degree, 35 degree wet type snow over here in uh, Pennsylvania, getting into upstate New York. And as we uh, continue to expand and look at the temperatures, you can see by Sunday morning, you can see we're, you know, we're right on the cusp of freezing to that 33 to 35 degree you know temperature so that's why a lot of this is going to be kind of a mixed bag of rain and you could be seeing some wet snowflakes uh mix in at times going to be all uh cold temperatures for portions of the southeast even getting in down into the almost freezing uh by the time we get into that sunday uh time frame to portions of um Alabama here getting into uh, Georgia. So there's definitely some colder air uh, with this. And this sinks all the way down into the Florida panhandle. And as we go into that Sunday time frame, on the backside, it kind of rings the moisture out of, you know, into Wisconsin, over the Great Lakes, over into uh, Michigan, with some of this would could be like effect snow by then. As, as this really starts to get cranking and drawing in that colder air, uh, the Pacific Northwest keeps the atmospheric river alive for much of the week, Wednesday all the way through uh, Sunday. So let's take a look at some of the totals. And I kind of broke this down from you know west to, to central into uh, the eastern part of the U.S. So let's start, start off with the west with the rain amounts between now and and uh, Sunday evening, so you can definitely see about a little over an inch into the Vancouver area, uh, almost two inches in Victoria, 2.4 inches in Mount Vernon, going a little bit over two inches in Seattle, going into Tacoma, about two and a half inches, uh, to Portland, about two and a half inches, uh, you know, going into uh, the Spokane, Washington area, about an inch of rainfall. So as we go further south, then that's when we can see those rainfall totals continue to drop some pretty impressive amounts just over the next five days. And these are to adding to those totals that, that you've already seen. So this is additional rainfall of almost up to three inches in Salem, going up to almost two inches in uh, Eugene, uh, all the way up to Baker City. So if you push further inland, the, the, the rain amounts continue to drop significantly and just about a quarter inch uh, for those areas in Baker City and less than a tenth of an inch going into Medford, but as you push further south into portions of Central California and, and Southern California, going to the LA area, not much of anything, unfortunately, where they desperately uh, need the rain. But here's, this, here's the snow component where it's gonna be uh, cold enough in the higher elevations, there's your snow flying into portions of Idaho, into Montana, into Wyoming, going into Colorado up here in the foothills here. But there's that snow that's really going to be breaking out and setting up over Canada with easily upwards to a foot and portions of a Saskatchewan going into Manitoba, as well as Ontario here, as this finger links will continue to press further south with sporadic two to six inches in portions of uh, North Dakota and South Dakota and getting into northern portions of Minnesota. Minneapolis could be seeing through your first snowfall of the season with about a two inches uh, for the Minneapolis-St. Uh, Paul area. But let's zoom into that central corridor and show you where the snow is going to fly for that neck of the woods. Mainly a lot of snow is going to be up in Canada, but as it pushes further south, again, some of this could be in the form of a blizzard-like conditions, but further south into Iowa, going into Illinois, going into Indiana and Ohio, about a dusting to an inch, probably going to be flying because I showed you those temperatures. You're kind of on the cusp of some freezing-like conditions. 
as we go to the uh, the rain component for the central part of the U.S., there's that severe threat further south. Could be picking up an inch upwards to an inch in the Dallas Fort Worth area going into East Texas again into Oklahoma a little bit heavier amounts about two to two inch swath extending from Kansas to uh, upper portions of Missouri going into Iowa here and most of this will be in the form of uh, snow with a lot of this is going to be some rain into West Wisconsin but you can see on the south side you know about a quarter inch to a half inch for much of the southeast and then as we move into Canada, that's when it really starts to hit the bullseye with the snow going into uh, Saskatchewan, going into you know uh, Manitoba here into Ontario. Like I mentioned, Winnipeg could pick up a foot, the easily upwards to two feet of snow just over the next couple of days with this dynamic system. So you can see the, uh, the graph down here below, that white is in indicative of upwards to two feet of uh, snowfall so that's a pretty good snows for uh, portions of uh, canada so as we extend eastward there's the rain component for much of the east less than an inch for much of the ohio valley but a little bit higher amounts as you get into portions of say rhode island going into uh, the cape here going into boston area a little bit, a little bit over an inch uh, between now and to the end 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 of us uh, sunday here with vermont new hampshire picking up at least an inch or two of rainfall into upstate new york as well as uh, pa and there's the snow as we extend it eastward again i showed you those temperatures it's going to be pretty much right on the cusp so most of this will be falling in the form of rain as it's quite not cold enough but things drastically change as we get towards the second half of november with a lot more colder air uh, on the table so i appreciate you guys watching do like this video definitely leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where i protect you before in after storm.